Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and today I'd like to talk to you about diamonds. Now don't get too excited because I'm talking about diamond cutting really rather than diamond rings. In actual fact, the kind of diamonds they use in diamond cutting are not actually real diamonds. These diamonds are manufactured specifically because you can get a certain size and shape and consistency in them and that makes them ideal for distributing around the segments or the rim of the cutting device. Now today I want to talk to you about diamond blades specifically. Now this is brought to you in association with Core Plus who make diamond blades but don't worry it's not an advert for Core Plus as such there's information here that will help you in your daily work and hopefully help you select the right diamond for the job and get a longer life out of it. So they do say that diamonds are forever but actually that's not the case in diamond cutting. You need the diamond blades to wear out and the reason you need the diamond blades to wear out is because you need to expose new diamonds to the cutting surface. In other words, if you just let that diamond blade run round until that top layer of diamonds were worn out, then it would be no good to you. So the idea is they embed the diamonds in and it has to wear out according to the material you're cutting. Now this is very, very important. We've got to remember one important principle here. Hard for soft and soft for hard. We try and find the right blade for the right material. And if you look at the Core Plus range, you'll see that on the back here, all the different materials that you can cut with the blade. And it also tells you that this is a general purpose blade. What does it actually mean? Well, it kind of suggests that what I've just told you is a load of nonsense. But what we're looking for here is a compromise. We're looking for something that will do the job for most common materials. And if you are cutting through a very hard material with that blade and it starts to glaze over and you find that if you run your thumbnail across the edge of the diamond blade with the saw turned off, obviously, that you can't actually feel any tiny little bits of diamond there. That means the blade is glazed over. And what you then need to do is run that blade through some abrasive material, something like a soft concrete block or a brick or something like that, which will wear down to a certain extent and expose new diamonds. And then you'll find that you can cut through with it perfectly well. Now I've seen people chuck diamond blades away. Perfectly good diamond blades with lots of segment life left on them just because they've stopped cutting and they chuck them in a skip and they say this is a load of rubbish. In actual fact you can fish it out the skip, dress it down and you've got a diamond blade which is good as new. Now the next thing you need to know is whether you're going to be cutting wet or dry. Now I would say that in every circumstance if you can cut wet you are better off. But there are limitations to cutting wet. But obviously if you're in a customer's kitchen you don't want to be flooding the place out. So you would cut dry in that situation. But if you can, if you're outside and you're using a petrol cut off saw and you can get a water bottle onto it or you can get a hose pipe onto it, you don't need a huge amount of water. Just a little bit of water dripping down there over the blade will keep the blade cool. And more importantly, it will suppress the dust so that it's not a healthy hazard to you and all the people around you but also it'll mean that it removes the dust a lot more effectively and if you remove the dust the cut is a lot faster. So wherever you can cut wet but if you can't you have to cut dry. There are some blades which are made to cut wet and these would be the continuous rim blade like this for hard materials. They're always better to cut wet because if you look at them that continuous rim has no segments in it. There's nothing much there to clear the amount of dust and debris. There's tiny little nicks all the way around the side of this blade which are there actually to help clear that dust. So this is what they call a turbo blade and it's used for things where you don't want to be chipping. This blade is a segmented blade and you can see that you've got a gullet in between each row of segments there. That gullet is there. One thing to reduce the stress on the actual core but the other thing is that it allows a little bit of expansion and contraction if the blade gets hot but also it clears the dust. Its most important function is in clearing the dust. It's a bit more expensive than the Core Plus standard range, but it does give you more bang for buck. In other words, when you start measuring the number of cuts that you get out of it, you do actually get 
more. So it's not always a good idea to go too cheap. Another reason that it's not always a good idea to go too cheap is because these segments have to be joined to this core and the way that they're joined is very very important indeed. Now you can just braze them on and if you've had blades for some time like I have you will have suffered a segment loss at some time. Now hopefully that hasn't happened when the blade's been spinning around and it's flown out and injured some that doesn't happen that often but it does happen but generally it's when you put the saw down and you just knock the blade maybe while it's warm or something like that and the segment falls off or maybe the blade is twisted slightly in the cut or something like that. We do find it time to time that the segments fall off. Now with these particular ones they're double laser welded so that segment is not just brazed it's put on there with a double laser weld and that means it's a lot less likely to be damaged. This is tested by OSA which is the highest level of testing that you can get and it ensures quality. If you go for a cheap blade that you don't particularly know the brand of it may well be that they're just brazed on and they're not particularly well made and even the core on some of those blades is a little a bit dubious in other words it can start to buckle as it heats up and so on whereas this is a magnesium steel core very very tough indeed and it won't distort and it obviously gives the segments a lot better chance of remaining on the rim and you can see that we've got little flutes in here that allow the dust to be removed very very effectively you can see there's a little v groove in there which also assists the speed of the cutting. And you do find that if you're using this continuous rim blade that the cut will be slower because this, as you can see, has got a more aggressive segment in it and because of those gaps in between it's removing the dust faster and it's cutting faster. So accept the fact that if you need to cut something like porcelain tiles and you don't want the chipping that you would get with something like this blade then if you're using a continuous rim blade or turbo blade then you're going to have a slower cut. So it's important that if you are cutting dry that you allow that blade to cool down a bit. You will find that dust extraction can help that process by the way because you're sucking air through all the time you're clearing the debris and you do find that the blade cuts cooler if you can get dust extraction. So if you're cutting on that kind of blade dust extraction is fairly unusual on a cut off saw but you will find in hole saws and things like that that you can get some good dust extraction kits. So the important things to remember when you are choosing a diamond blade make sure that it's got all the safety certificates make sure that it's been fully tested so that it's not a danger to you and the people around you then look at the materials that you're intended to cut and I know this is difficult because if you're a general builder from day to day you don't know what particular materials you're dealing with but on the back here you can find the guide on these core plus ones it's, it's very very easy to understand it's all there for you to follow so just make sure that you're getting a blade which is best suited you, to your material then work out whether you're going to cut dry or you're going to cut wet and avoid that dust if you are cutting dry and if you are cutting dry also don't forget to allow the blade to cool down every so often. Don't just go using it as a machine, cutting hundreds and hundreds of cuts off a, you know, if you were doing a repetitive cut and you had to cut loads and loads of bricks all to the same size, then just take a break every so often, move a few bricks out the way, and that just gives the diamonds a little chance to cool down and recover. And you will find that you'll get a longer life out of your diamonds if you just follow these simple rules. So I'm Roger Bisbee, thanks very much for watching and my grateful thanks to Core Plus for helping us bring this video to you.